everyone. Welcome back to Adobe Live. Thank you all so much for joining us on this wonderful Thursday. Um, and welcome to Draw This In Your Style. Thank you so much for joining us. It's so good to see you. Today we are joined, this is day two, with the wonderful uh, esteemed moderator, uh, Voodoo Val. How are you doing today, Val? Doing pretty good. I'm just voguing for you guys, you know, just doing my, thank you. Thank you. You always, you always catch the flow and work the jam, Cody, every time. Thank you. <laughs> Hey everyone in chat, welcome. I hope you all are having a wonderful day. Hey Clever, Sam, good to see you all. Bliss, Keith, oh my gosh, so many people. Mercutio, oh my gosh, welcome. General Kenobi, hello there. Hello Ms. there. Barn, Charmaine, <laughs> hello, hello, good to see you all. Um, if you guys have never joined us for Draw This In Your Style or if you've never heard of Draw This In Your Style, um, basically it is when an artist will create um, an illustration and post it online and they will invite everyone and anyone to uh, create it, recreate it in their own artistic style. And basically we do that on this show, but with a twist. So before the stream, um, we had Val choose the theme. Our theme is witches. If you guys weren't here for yesterday, you guys can also check out day one if you wanna see um, our process there. Um, but we created illustrations before the stream and then we swapped them. And now we are redrawing each other's in our own artistic style. Um, but before we show off the artwork that we're working on, I'm going to give it over to Val so she can give herself a little bit of an intro and we'll show off her portfolio and you guys can see what kind of art she typically makes. Hello, hello everybody. It is I, Voodoo Val. Um, also, yes, Bliss, um, I'm looking cozy, I'm feeling cozy. I am decked out in the bathrobe chic. Uh, this this evening, uh, very very comfy. Um, but yeah, I am a dark fantasy artist, illustrator, and uh, Photoshop instructor. I suppose um, I do a lot of like portraits and spooky things. I do a lot of like fan art portraits and also portraits of my original characters. I love that you're like, oh, ah, hmm. <laughs> um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of dark spooky art on my Behance for you guys to check out. Um, I also do like some cute, more like children's illustration type stuff uh, lately. I've been getting into a lot of um, like little octopus drawings and Animal Crossing stuff and things like that, trying to kind of broaden my artistic horizons. Um, and I do some graphic work and, and things. Uh, some of you folks might recognize me um, because I do a lot of the moderation in the chat um, on afternoons over on Adobe Live. And uh, yeah, drawing, painting, um, animating occasionally, and all the time uh, making puns if I can. That's, <laughs> that's kind of how it goes. So Yes, that is absolutely fantastic. I I love your little Animal Crossing portraits. They're so cute. <laughs> Thank you. This is uh this is Shannon Van Pelt's Animal Crossing character. Oh, cute. I got really desperate for mushroom items in Animal Crossing, and <laughs> I started telling everybody that if they would deliver to my island the mushroom items that I wanted, I would draw their characters. And Aww. so people were like, yes, <laughs> okay. And that's what I did. So um, yeah, I've done a lot of these uh, first for um, for Animal Crossing items and then for actual commissions. And it's been a pretty good time, so. That's so fun. I love that idea. Thanks. Yeah, all right, you guys. Hey, Gareth, welcome, Stony. Good to see you guys. Thank you so much for joining. Um, we will go ahead and pop on over to Photoshops. 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 And we can give you guys a little peek on what we're working on. So, um, as I mentioned before, we both created an illustration before the stream. So this is the one that I created that Val is redrawing. And this is the one that Val created that I am redrawing. <clears throat> and if you guys would <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, if you guys would like to recreate either of these in your own artistic style, free, feel free to do so. We would love to see your work. Um, you can post it online with the hashtag Adobe Live DTIYS, or you can post it in the Photoshop Discord under the Draw This In Your Style tab. Um, we have almost 200 entries at this point, and we have um, a handful of ones that we're going to show off at the end of the stream as well. We got a few entries yesterday, actually, so I'm really excited to show those off. Yay, I'm so excited. That's so much fun getting to see what other people do. Um, so I am, I'm working on cleaning up my values today. Uh, I started adding in color uh, after our stream yesterday, like really trying to like paint in color. And I noticed that I was having a lot of trouble because I don't think that I laid down good values before I actually started that process. Hmm. Um, so what I did was I um, just kind of went into grayscale 
Um, and I am going to kind of work on bringing a lot of these shapes and forms out and like painting it up uh, nifty. And then I'm going to add colors over top. So I have a couple color comps and stuff that I'm going to throw over top of it after I'm done. Um, and we'll see how that ends up looking. Nice. That's awesome. Thanks. I um, do you do you work in grayscale often um, or start in grayscale? I've never even really tried that before. Like what kind of process do you have to go through to, to do that kind of thing? Well, I've been trying to get more into like doing color first off just because um, I, I feel like I'm more inclined if I do color first off to like add some wild colors in, but it's actually something I really struggle with, like choosing mm. color and, and working with color. And so um, almost all of my paintings, like all of those, um, the portraits that you showed right when you pulled up my portfolio in the um, assorted uh, portraits or assorted artwork folder. Mm -hmm. um, every single one of those, even though they're super violent or violent, vibrant, uh -huh. um, maybe violent too, some of them, I don't know. Um, but um, all of them were actually done in grayscale. Um, mm. I would say like, gosh, almost a hundred percent of my earlier work um, is grayscale. And most of, most of what I do uh, now also in grayscale, um, but uh, yesterday I tried to get out of my comfort zone a little bit. And I think that one of the lessons I'm learning when I do approach work um, in the context of like painting and color straight off is I need to kind of practice and get a better hand on the values that I, that I choose and, and how I actually execute, you know, the, the, um, the color application sure. uh, because otherwise I find myself in this situation where I'm like, you know what? I need to clean up the values. I need to make it look a little more crispy. Um, and so that's what I'm doing, learning my lesson. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're working it out. Um, but you said you don't, you, 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 have you never um, worked in grayscale or is it just something that you don't typically do? I've never worked in grayscale. Um, although, I mean, I have specifically done, uh, like the first inktober list that I did, I did, um, kind of like in grayscale watercolor brushes. I used Kyle's oh. watercolor and ink brushes to do my first inktober. Um, okay. those are the only like black and white images I've ever done. Um, but they stayed black and white. I didn't go to color after that. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Um, so it was just, yeah. that was the style that you chose. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. I pretty much, yeah, I, I always just start with laying down color. Um, and then I kind of just like uh, check my values as I go, really. Mm -hmm. um, uh, just with a value layer over top of everything most of the time. Um, uh, and I, I select from a, a pretty limited palette. I think I've mentioned this on stream before, but here's, here's my palette that I uh, select from for my artwork. Like pretty much all of my artwork was created with these colors here. Um, and maybe like alterations of those colors. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of just uh, figure out the contrast between the two colors that are touching and making making sure that my values are working well as I go. Um, okay. Because uh, I don't really ever use outlines either um, in my work. So, and all of my, most of my color is flat. So the colors that I use really have to have contrast um, yeah. when, they're, when they're touching, you know, yeah. otherwise, um, it's it kind of becomes muddled that makes perfect sense because yeah you you don't um do a lot of outlines i feel like the only time i've seen you have like lines in your work is when you're denoting like a particular important detail mm -hmm. um but like like you have the lines like on the on the little cape um stuff like that but not typically around like your actual characters whereas i don't know i don't know if i would say i have outlines in my work like i do a sketch and that sketch is an outline um but i don't actually i i, I don't remove my sketch i never turn my sketch layer off mm. um i just kind of paint it into the project and leave it there um and then it kind of affords like an interesting texture that goes along with with everything and that's just mm -hmm. how it comes to be and sometimes it it i feel like the lines kind of lend themselves to it but i don't typically keep my lines that I end right. up adding. In fact, most of the time when I do like a really detailed line art, I typically regret it because when I put too much effort into the line art and I don't leave it as a sketch that I can paint over and paint in, um, I feel like I block myself into the plan I've made for myself too much. 
<clears throat> I stick with that uh, sketch for too long and I don't let the design breathe. I don't allow myself to explore anything other than that solid line art. So I don't typically do that. Um, do you like when you start your work, like I know that you you do like line work and things like you've got your sketch in the background there. Um, that do you then always just kind of block in like the the large shapes and stuff and leave it underneath or how does that work for you? Um, yeah, so um, turning off my colors here, um, I usually have I'll have my sketch layers in a folder um, and I'll usually once I'm done with my sketch, I'll just turn the opacity down on my sketch mm -hmm. um, and then I'll put I'll make a new group over top of that. Um, and I'll put all of my colors in that group. Um, and yeah, I just I just block in, uh, like for instance, I have the hair here on one single layer, um, the, the dress on one single layer. Typically I'll have like sim the same color on the same layer. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, that's kind of just how I work or I have like the belt on one layer and stuff like that. Um, and I'll just block in over top of the sketch um and sometimes i'll just like if i need to see the sketch underneath i'll just lower the opacity of the layer that i'm coloring on mm -hmm. um so i can see the sketch um transparently through the color and then i'll just pull the opacity back up and that's pretty much the in my entire coloring process really outside of just adding on the like the detail lines that i do afterwards and that's pretty much it Nice, nice. Yeah. Um, also, sorry if you guys can hear my little monster screaming in the background. Um, <laughs> I have two chihuahuas that have absolutely no chill um, ever. So that would be the um, the song of their people that they are sounding an alarm, most likely because a package has been delivered to my homestead. Um, and they got to let the delivery man know who's boss. Mm -hmm. This is their territory. <laughs> That's typically how it goes. The, the only problem with having chihuahuas is sometimes they do that to me and I live here. Right. So, you know, um, this particular dog has its pros and cons. And <laughs> one of those cons is that they are very loud when I'm streaming. But um, the no chill chihuahua. No, I was about no to say the, the chihuahua. Yeah, the chihuahua. Oh, these puns, man. Um, so I know who this person is in the chat. We had a very stern discussion before the stream that he was not <laughs> going to harm me with the power of his puns. And it seems that he has totally ignored that entire conversation. So one of these days, I'm going to I'm going to gather my pun strength and I will meet you <laughs> in pun <laughs> battle, sir. Um, Kieran, Kieran Lewis is here in chat. Good to see you, Kieran. Karen's hey, awesome. Well, and D, good to see you guys. Thank you so much for joining. Hello, hello. If you guys have any questions for Val or me or uh, on our process or anything like that, feel free to ask too. This is just like a totally chill hangout style stream. Um, but if you guys want to see any kind of demonstration or anything like that, we can totally um, show you guys uh, any of our little tips and tricks if you're interested. Yeah, for sure. Um, are you saying that you're going to attempt to punch me? I'm going to punish you. Uh, Eric commit, so you better better watch out. That's what's <laughs> gonna happen. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna withhold for now. Sounds like some serious. Sounds like a a harsh punishment. Yes, Sam. Exactly. Thank you. Don't be too proud of these puns you have constructed. The ability to make puns is insignificant next to the power of the Force. <laughs> General Kenobi coming in clutch with Star Wars stuff. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <sighs> Um, oh, no, you, uh, Kieran, you rock, man. Kieran's super awesome. If you guys don't know um, who Kieran is or about him and his work, um, please check him out. He's super, super ill, as the cool kids say these days. I think that's what they say. Um, if that's say not that? what they say, don't, don't listen. So. Listen, Cody. Listen. <laughs> is that what they say? I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> is it? <laughs> <laughs> that's what they say listen cody um we are supposed to be on the same side here um and i i'm really I'm, I'm offended um i am a cool kid most of the time i think and if i say that's what they say then that's what they say cody you are the trendsetter yes it is i <laughs> um corn <laughs> now everyone's laughing at me now <laughs> um no, he is, he's super cool and you should check him out um, regardless of whether I'm describing him like the cool kids or not. 
Um, I'm super ill. I hope not. <laughs> I'm sorry. Maybe they really don't say that. But I think it'd be cool if they did still say that. That might be like an 80s, 90s thing, though. I think so, yeah. I can dream. I can dream, guys. Um, ill, hope you feel better. Okay, I guess it's not what the cool kids say. I'm convinced now. Everybody's <laughs> making fun of my sick quip, okay? Yuck. <laughs> yeah. So um, sick, bro. Sick, <laughs> sick, bro. Whoa, whoa, man. <laughs> okay. Um... I love the lines that you have put into the um, the wings. By the way, I think oh, those are so cool. Yeah, I um, I went ahead and used the symmetry tool. Actually, if you guys have never used the symmetry tool, I just hit my bill of my hat on my mic again. I'm going to try to not do that consistently throughout the stream. Honestly, um, it makes <laughs> me feel better about what I said about the cool kids. So <laughs> keep keep going, keep it keep it coming. <laughs> Um, yes, if you guys have never used the symmetry tool, it is super helpful. Um, there's like tons of different options, like vertical, horizontal, wavy, spiral. Mm. It's pretty crazy. You can make some like really cool, like mandala uh, designs and stuff like that. But um, I use the just straight vertical line to just do both wings uh, uh, symmetrical on, on, the, on each side and it makes it so much faster. Nice. Um, yeah. And I just Ew. use this little... <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get a little as much reference photo out of that this. I got of the Luna moth. <laughs> Luna moths are so beautiful, you guys. By the way, if you've never seen one, this is this is that. If you want to see something is. even cooler than just the Luna moth, you should look up a video of a Luna moth coming out of the chrysalis, specifically Ooh. a time lapse of the Luna moth coming out of the chrysalis, because it comes out and its wings look like a very soft crumple of tissue paper. And if you watch the time lapse, it flutters its wings super fast until they unroll. And then those little long parts are actually super long. Um, and they like go pew and just kind of like, like in the, obviously it's a time lapse. So it's, yeah. you know, it's not as fast as all that, but the time lapse is super cool. Cause it looks like it just like shakes it until just like these massive wing things just kind of pop out. And it's, it's really, really beautiful. That's cool. Um, there's some pretty amazing creatures on this planet guys. Um, some very ill creatures. Uh, so sick. Luna moth, so sick. <laughs> what do you say it like? Sick. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like for the next month or so, every time either of us streams on Adobe Live, someone's going to bring this up. That's what I feel. I feel it. I feel it coming on. Um, I don't know what you ever you ever start shading something and you're like, is this even how it looks like in real life, or am I just making this up as I go? Yeah, I think I'm making this up. I don't think I, this is accurate. I have a tendency to do that when I'm getting lazy. Like if I'm bored mm -hmm. with a project that I'm working on, I'm just like, okay, yeah, whatever. I'll just start shading <laughs> without yeah, using any reference. Like make this up real quick, and then I, I just end this. up because it ends up looking bad. I just end up making more work for myself. So mm -hmm. yeah, yep, that's exactly what I'm doing right now. Is I'm like making up how this goes uh you know what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna i'm gonna come over here and i'm gonna color this in uh and i'm gonna redraw this um and sometimes that's what you have to do sometimes mm -hmm. you can't you can't just leave it sit and just keep doing it wrong um and i do this all the time guys so if you do this in your artwork don't feel bad um, because I very, very frequently just like start drawing something and realize I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm like, mm, hmm. I should draw this better. I should yeah. not do it this way. Uh, I think I want to bring, there we go. That, okay. Sort of. Almost. I'm working on it. It's happening. Or... You could do what I always tell people to do and never seem to do uh, enough on my own. And that is look up reference. Um, yes. Let's get some puffy sleeves. If I could spell the word sleeves, we'd be in business. <laughs> we'd, we'd get what we want. Okay, puffy sleeves. Give me some puffy sleeve, sleeves in perspective. There you go. Give me what I want, Google. You ever, you ever Google reference and you keep finding exactly what you need, but just slightly not the way it needs to look. And you just like, I've, I've been down a rabbit hole before trying to find like the right facial like turn 
for a reference portrait that I Mm -hmm. was doing. Um, And I think I spent longer hunting for the perfect reference than I did actually painting the portrait. And I was like, I got to stop doing this. (laughs) Yeah. This is not great. Uh, Sam says, oh, neat is the texture in the wings. Uh, My chat is going way too fast. Hang on one second, you guys. Uh, is the texture in the wings from the brush, Cody? Oh, the, the watercolor brush? Yeah, it is actually. That was, um, this is one of my favorite of Kyle's um, watercolor brushes. It's called Natural Edge Painter One specifically. There's a few of them. This is my, this is the one that I use. Um, if you ever see any of my artwork that has like, maybe like a slight watercolor texture, this is the one that I use. And it's, it's really cool because it kind of like blends into itself as you paint mm. over it. That's it's nice. Re- it's really neat. Um, and yeah, so, so uh, I actually had put the watercolor texture down and then got rid of it because I'm putting a solid color layer down first, I decided. And then I'm going to put the, the watercolor texture over top of that. So it'll make it pop a little bit more against the darker background. So nice, nice. Yeah. Um, I ha- am using a brush right now that does this thing where I can't paint anything over top of what's on that layer if I'm using paint that's darker than what I'm painting over the top of. Mm. So um, if I paint black and then I grab white, I can't paint any white over it. But if I grab a darker value, it lets me paint it, um, which is actually really, really helpful um, when I'm working with values because it means I it, like it kind of forces me to not muddy things up and I got to right. think about what I'm putting down. Um, it's, it, it can be kind of a pain sometimes. And you'll notice I'm making like a lot of, um, new layers as I go along in this, but it's actually really helpful once I get used to the brush. Um, I like, you know, using fancy, interesting brushes that have like cool blending things and stuff like that. Um, it can be really helpful, especially if you're going for a very particular style, like, you know, working with values and trying to get like a particular effect or, you know, using the watercolor stuff that mm-hmm. blends into itself. It's, it's really fun. Um, what brush are you using specifically? Where did you, um, get, where did you find it? This is a brush from a brush pack that I have that is massive. Um, I think that this is in, I got this from Nerzan Bekaliev. And I think that this is somebody that's on um, a really great brush foundry, if you will, mm. um, called uh, digitalbrushes.com. I think that's where I got this. Uh, and yeah, I, I highly recommend it. If you folks are looking for um, a place to get some really cool Photoshop brushes, um, check it out because it's it's neat, like there's, it's just like a never ending scrolling timeline of brushes from nice. artists. And every brush post is accompanied by a painting that they did with the brush. Um, so you can see like, you know, everybody's art is gonna be different, but you can see the capabilities of the brush and like mm-hmm. the kind of texture and the kind of detail that you could use the brush to go for, you know, stuff like that. So um, check it out, it's good stuff. That's cool. I did, I've never heard of that website before. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, it's like a it's like a Tumblr um, account mm, that mm-hmm. and they've moved a few times. But anytime they change or move, they always post about it first and let people know that things are going to change. Um, I'm going to flip my canvas really quick to see if that helps me. Um, that's also a really good tip, by the way. Um, if you guys are struggling with a portion of your illustration, um, and you get to a point where you just can't stand to look at it anymore and everything is kind of looking wrong. Sometimes you can look at a painting so long that it starts to, like you can't really see the mistakes mm-hmm. anymore or you can't stand it or you can't tell what's wrong. You know something's wrong, but you can't tell what it is. Um, play for canvas. Uh, it'll work. Uh, question from Laura, by the way, what is a good reference resource to practice lighting and shadowing? Um, I think actually a really good way to practice painting in general that kind of covers all of the stops, no matter what kind of illustration or painting style you have, 
um, is actually to get freeze frame stills from Hollywood movies. Mm, I've seen people do that before. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a really great way to, because um, like uh, there's the in in a movie like the director is like keeping all of the like the the composition of every shot like mm -hmm. looking really nice. Um, they're playing with colors and lighting and stuff in a scene to like set a mood. So you have like composition. You have um, like as far as the position of elements, you have color composition in there, and then you also typically have like pretty great values and shadows and stuff so doing studies of of stills from your favorite films is a great way to practice um and it also allows you to kind of get into the project instead of doing like a boring study that you hate because sometimes actually studying can be kind of tedious and you don't want to do it you don't want to get to it um but if you're doing like if you're a harry potter fan and you want to do a freeze frame you know from the prisoner of azkaban that just makes it more fun yeah for sure what about you cody what do you have any tips for that sort of thing um for me i learned light um and color mainly by bringing other people's artwork into photoshop and kind of like color dropping their colors and learning mm. how they used color um mm -hmm. and that's just how i learned the best like i would watch i would also watch um lighting tutorials um from youtubers and and things like that um keenan lafferty um, oh yeah he, he is a great great um tutorial he was like the first artist that i found on youtube way back in the day yeah. um, and he still makes tutorials he used to work for riot games and he did splash art for league of legends mm -hmm. um and he does a lot of color and light tutorials on youtube um and but but yeah i, I watched a lot of tutorials um but for me how i learned the best was simply studying how other and like just deeply analyzing how other people use color um, and kind of just trying to do that in my own way on my artwork. Um, Keenan Lafferty has an excellent video um, that I actually need to review. Um, and he, he has a, a tutorial and it might be multiple parts as well um, about illustrating and painting different materials. So not everything in your painting looks like it's made out of the same thing, which is mm -hmm. kind of what I'm doing by accident right here is like painting it all with the same texture. I typically go through um, at the end of a painting with like actual images, like textured images and mm -hmm. stuff. And I'll overlay mm -hmm. textures and paint textures in. Um, but he has a really great um, kind of uh, tutorial on how to like paint everything as you go to look like it is a different material and you'd be surprised like his tips and tricks they always seem to be things that you wouldn't maybe necessarily think is the problem with your art not being the way that you want it until you hear him explain like the importance of certain things and doing certain stuff that way mm -hmm. in your work and i feel like he, i'm so glad you brought him up because i think that you could really learn a, a great deal from him if you folks have not checked out keaton lafferty um, i might stop messing with this arm i'm getting to that point where i think i have to not look at it otherwise mm. i'm going to ruin it yeah so. sometimes if i'm not um being uh, have, having success with a specific part of an art illustration i have to just like leave it alone and just move on to another part otherwise i'm gonna go nuts <laughs> yeah 100 percent. i i frequently um i have to move to totally different parts or just another piece of that um element otherwise I like if i don't give my brain a break from it i will it'll continue to make it worse and worse mm -hmm. um which is like Right now, I, I feel like I, I can come in and work on the rest of the arm um, and then leave the shoulder alone because the shoulder is what's really uh, not really coming together the way I want it right now. Um, and I think that when you give yourself a break and you're not too hard on yourself about stuff like that, that that's when it actually starts to come together for you. Yeah. Um, you just take a break from something. Um Sam Peterson is on top of his link game. He is though. He is. Good job, Sam. Yeah, Keenan Give it Lafferty up for Sam. Links. Yes. Best moderator. Yes. Mm. Mm. Bravo. Bravo, Sam. Uh, we should do that more often. We but should. we should do it at like really inopportune moments that are awkward for him. 
Um, <laughs> just like when he gets into the weekly meeting and things like that. Oh, wow. Wow. You know what, Sam? Man. The way you moderator. just entered this Zoom call. Wow. <laughs> I like it. We're going to start doing this. Um, I just want everybody to know we plan to do this. <laughs> Yeah, Umicorn is clapping for Sam. If we could fill the chat with clap emojis for Sam, that would be excellent. That would just help Absolutely. us carry this whole new narrative. Um, are we using track pads or a mouse? I'm using a stylus. I'm using a I Wacom have, Cintiq. Yep, I have a stylus as well. I have a Wacom Intuos Pro. Yeah, mine is the, the Cintiq 16 HD. Um, so it's like a display tablet so that I can draw directly on my screen. And then yours is... What, which one is it again? Um, so yeah, I, I just have um, just a regular pen tablet with no screen. So I'm looking at my monitor straight ahead um, mm -hmm. and I have my tablet down on my desk. Uh, we got we got some claps, we got some claps in chat. This is great, this is excellent. Thank you everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Sam's like, thanks guys. <laughs> thanks everyone. Yes, me. <laughs> <laughs> Clap for me, yes, minions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is uh, this this arm is starting to look not so bad. I'm starting to feel a little more confident about it. Um, what do you do, Cody, um, when you are like feeling totally just like zero confidence about a piece? Like, how do you solve that? for yourself? Do you start something new? Do you move to a new project? Do you take a break? Like when you're just really not enthused and you feel like you're doing a bad job. Mm -hmm. I have to completely step away and take a break. Um, I know like, so, like, I, I feel like it's different for everyone. Like some artists can just like, oh, I have to power through it. Or, uh, you know, like I have to draw a ton of different, just sketch and sketch and sketch until I just make good art again and stuff like that. Me, I just get so burnt out, like emotionally. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. just like, just, I just feel so drained that I just have to completely step away. Um, unless of course, you know, I have a deadline and, and you know, I have to finish it, then I'll, I'll power through it. But, um, if it's just like personal work or something like that, um, I'll, I'll definitely take a break for, uh, quite a while. Um, sometimes. Yeah. Um, I, I'm kind of the same way. Like if I have a deadline to meet, then I, you know, I gotta do what I gotta do. But for the most part, if I'm, if I'm so burnt out that I can't stand to look at it and it's like like I love that you you said like it's emotionally draining to me yeah. to to work on it um I feel like you have to you have to leave it alone. I typically go I, I honestly I go watch a movie or play a video game um mm -hmm. and I I play something that like brings me a lot of joy or I will, if I choose to watch a movie, I will watch something specifically that has some kind of basis in the genre or the kind of vibe I'm going for with the piece that I'm doing mm -hmm. just to kind of tie it in. Um, and sometimes that really serves to kind of rekindle my enthusiasm for whatever I'm working with. Um, like for example, um, I sometimes like if I'm, I'm working on, um, I like to write short stories and, and do illustrations for them. Um, so I will kind of get a little bit burnt out on doing the illustrations. And I find that because I'm illustrating my own stories, I feel like sometimes my artistic skill when it comes to storytelling and doing like cinematic environmental kind of scenes is not up to par with my writing. Like, I feel like I can write a scene like that, but I don't always understand how to convey that artistically in a piece, because mm. if you look at my portfolio, I don't really have a lot of that sort of thing. Um, and it's something that I'm trying to improve at. So I will, if I have to take a break, I'll pick a movie that I feel like embodies the kind of vibe that I would love for people to feel when they look at my story illustrations and I'll watch that film mm -hmm. um, and see if I can't kind of pull that that out you know I actually kind of do the same thing um, with music um, mm. like I have a specific playlist that I feel like goes really well with my artwork 
Yeah. Um, so like if I'm feeling kind of uninspired, I'll, I'll listen to that music or, um, a lot of the time when I'm working, I'll listen to, if you're familiar with my personal streams on my Behance, um, you'll know that I listen to a lot of like ASMR environments. Mm. Um, so a lot of the time, uh, I will pick an ASMR like nature environment or themed environment. That's the same theme of the artwork that I'm working on. Oh, so like, for instance, if I'm working on a Harry Potter piece, I'll pick like Hogwarts uh, ambiance sounds or something like that. Um, and it just like really like puts you in that like headspace of yeah. working on the piece. That is and brilliant. You can find them on YouTube. They're everywhere. I have a full playlist of all kinds of them that I listen to all the time. That's brilliant. That is so smart. I never thought of, of doing that, of listening to ambient sounds that are like the same as what I'm trying to paint. Cause that would, that would really, really put you in the mental headspace of like what you're trying to illustrate. Yeah. It would, that'd be like the closest that you could probably come to on a whim of like going, especially if you're doing fantasy art, mm -hmm. you know, of like going to the place and, and experiencing the space that is brilliant. You're a genius. <laughs> or I'm going to do that all the time. That's my new jam. I think. Okay. Um, I, I think, I think actually her arms look good. I'm going to, I'm going to leave it like this, I think. And I'm going to move to painting the top. And then I don't know if I'm going to finish the hair, um, on stream because I don't know how much time do we have left? It, of the... About 20 minutes. Okay. -ish. Um, yeah, I don't know if Less I'm going to get to the hair because I, I want to do dreadlocks really bad. I want to do like off green dreadlocks. <laughs> that would, that be, would cool. be awesome. You know, like, um, but I think that's going to take, that's going to take some time. Um, so I'll probably leave it as like wigglies for right now um, until I finish it. Um, that'll probably be one of the last things I do. Um, but I think everything is starting to come together. How are you doing over there? I have been working on these wings longer than I thought I would, honestly. Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to power through it actually, funny enough. <laughs> um, I, I think I'm getting somewhere. Um, but um, I'm, I'm kind of like trying to, I, I, I think I was struggling with what color I wanted the base to be to look good with the darker background. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I'm getting somewhere now. So now I'm starting to add back in that watercolor texture over top and we'll see what that looks like. Nice, nice. Um, I really love the colors that you have chosen. Oh, um, and I, I, I feel like they're, you know, they're Luna Moth colors, but I'm not good. I'm really, I feel like that's another, another place that where I struggle is like choosing soft colors that work well together that also maintain the, um, like still communicate the proper values. Mm. That's really difficult for me. Um, because I'm like, as you can see, my, my natural artistic state is harsh contrast mm -hmm. like that's you know and I, I do go in and soften like because I always do like a color layer afterwards and I'll go in and I will soften um everything and so it's not going to be like all the places where I have black in my piece right now it's not going to be harsh black mm -hmm. at the in the end you know I'll, I'll change that I just need to be able to see it and visualize the difference between certain elements but choosing soft colors like you've chosen for the for the wings I I struggle with that a lot yeah, I actually struggle with really bright colors too. So mm. it's, I you know, I think everyone just has their comfort zone and kind of forte and personal tastes as well to just uh, like colors that you just kind of naturally gravitate towards and just kind of look good to your eye. Mm -hmm. um, like I used to, I, before I started using this darker, like moodier palette, I used to use a lot like um, maybe earth tones but brighter earth tones like more saturated more vibrant earth tones but mm -hmm. it's not really where i wanted my palette to be um and i kind of like forced myself to when i'm picking colors i'm like okay i kind of had to like train my brain to like be okay with the darker moodier colors because i knew that's the direction that i wanted my artwork to go in mm. um so and then I, I eventually just ended up with this palette that i'm working with right now kind of this my working palette 
Yeah, and you um, had explained to me uh, a while back, um, I'd love to hear you talk about it again, like the, the transition that you made um, from one color palette to the next, because you said you had a certain color palette, you were doing things a certain way for a time, um, and you made the decision to, to change it, and you actually stick with the colors in that color palette for the most part, right? Like you don't really deviate from the the palette that you've chosen for your your brand basically, right? Yeah, um, and that's mostly just for the sake of cohesiveness, um, just for like my portfolio. Mm -hmm. It kind of helps, <clears throat> let's say like all of my animal characters, it kind of helps um, create the idea that they're all from the same world. Mm, yeah. um, and just like going on my portfolio website or going on my Instagram feed and you scroll scroll through everything, um, it, it all looks very cohesive um, and kind of all fall related <laughs> basically yeah. is like the colors that I choose. Um, but uh, yeah, so just for like the sake of like my personal work, especially um, like in relation to my, my personal characters, maybe for my book or something like that, um, I'm kind of like helps create that world um, kind of making sure that all of my characters are dressed similarly to, um, in the same colors. Um, and just, yeah. Um, so I stick to that one, uh, similar palette. I may deviate a little bit, like I'll start with a color from my palette and maybe change the hue slightly, change the saturation slightly, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, my main, um, starting point is this palette and I, I rarely deviate from it. And, you know, I think you've done a really excellent job of making the choices for what to put in this color palette, because until you told me that you don't use anything other than those colors, I never would have guessed. And oh. I, I, I think that that's like really interesting, like coming to that realization about your work, because um, I feel like with the colors you've chosen, you actually have the ability to create a lot of different vibes and themes while keeping it very cohesive. Mm -hmm. And I, I never would have thought that you had um, a limited palette and you didn't use anything other than than what is on that palette because you like you chose perfectly, I think. Oh, thank you. Um, you're welcome. You're welcome. Very well done. And honestly, if any of you folks in chat have not yet seen um, Cody Bear's Instagram, you should go. Um, I have actually, this is, maybe this is weird. I have actually visited your Instagram when I had a bad day. Oh, <laughs> Because so your work, yeah, your work is like so cozy and nice. And I don't think it's possible to view your portfolio and feel bad. I don't think you can. <laughs> um, and I was like, man, I just need something cozy. And I was like, who's the coziest person I know? <laughs> I'm going to go look at Cody Bear's stuff. And well, that's I did. the best compliment ever. <laughs> I well, love you're it. welcome. You. <laughs> you guys should check it out. Uh, looks like Sam posted the link. Um, if you haven't seen it, you're missing out. So <laughs> take a look. My dog is right outside my door. Um, and he he's, oh, no, he's scratching. Do you guys, would you guys like to meet my dog? Yes. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Hold on. I'll, I'll let him, I'll let you guys see him. Um, because I don't think he's going to leave. I don't think he's going <laughs> to stop. So I'll be right back. Hold on, little man. I'm coming. Yes, I hear you, little baby. I hear you. Hello. Hello, I mister. love hearing Val like talk to, to her dog. It's yeah. adorable. Yeah. Hello. I talk to my dog like he's a baby, by the way. <laughs> um, so hold on. I have to hear Cody. Um, so this is Pee Pee Herman. Um, <laughs> he is like a very small wolf. He's very sweet. He's my sweet baby. Let me put my other earbud in here. Um, he's really tiny. He's real small. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, he also does this thing. I don't know if he'll do it right now, but if I if I blow air on his neck, he will lose his mind because it's his favorite thing ever and have like a little <laughs> spazzy dog attack. Like he, it's like the greatest thing in the world to him. But I don't know if I want to do it because I think then he'll want to play with me and he won't go away. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Um, so yeah, this is my little this is my little design doggo. Oh, he's so cute. He's a sweet baby until you meet him in person and you realize he only looks cute on stream. That's how I feel about, uh, or we have a mini dachshund and she is just, uh, 
She's she's very photogenic and very beautiful. She's also very bossy. Aww. <laughs> little sassy girl. Sounds yeah. like you have a little girlfriend over at Cody's. <laughs> yeah. She got a sassy dog too. Yeah. All right. You want to go outside? You want to go away <laughs> for just a little bit? <laughs> you want to go away now? You want to leave <laughs> You want to leave mommy alone now? Okay. Uh, we're going to put him back out. Come on. You want to go outside? You want to go outside? Yeah, you do. You know what that word means. <laughs> go on. Go outside. Go outside. Okay. <sighs> Lies, Val. Herman is always precious. He's not, though. He's, 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 um... <sighs> He is the stereotype of Chihuahuas. Chihuahuas, I think, not all Chihuahuas, um, because much much of this is nurture. Um, but there are a lot of Chihuahuas. I think that they they choose their person, and that's their person. One you know? person dog. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he's he's a kind of a one family dog, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. So like, he loves us. He's great to us, um, but. Um, I, I find it funny that Panda specifically is, is like, he's precious all the time because Panda's met PP Herman in person. Um, <laughs> and you should know he's not, he's not excellent. He's just like, uh, you don't, you're not on the list of people <laughs> that are supposed to be here at this time. And that means that I need to sound the alarm. <laughs> okay. Paging Mr. Herman, Mr. Herman. <laughs> cantankerous old puppo he is he's 10 years old oh wow he doesn't look 10 no he's uh he's a a very youthful looking um baby uh it it, when he was younger um we bought him uh through an ad online Hmm. and the the picture that they posted um it's actually in my um on my laptop in my uh reference folder because I want to paint it. So one of these days um, I'll, I'll paint it for you so you guys um, can see my artistic rendition of him as a baby. But um, he was very, very small and there was a Pepsi Cola can next to him for scale, for scale. And he was smaller than the Pepsi Cola can. Oh my God. Because he's the runt of his siblings. And so, but it wasn't like a little tiny baby dog laying down. It was like him sitting like the dog sit pose and he only his the tips of his ears were taller than the pepsi can oh my goodness really cute very sweet um actual monster that's that's my dog (laughs) i'm glad you guys think he's sweet he's like he is like a little little baby wolf okay we have just a couple more minutes here before we are going to head over to look at community entries. I might throw some colors down um, here with some of the color comps I did then, just so we can actually see it with color before we take off. Let's see if I can do that. Got a few. Um, I would love to know uh, what you guys like. I, I'm kind of inclined like towards this, this brownish green one, only because I feel like it looks really cohesive in the stream overlay and next to your piece. Like, I feel like it makes everything look- <laughs> Oh yeah, it does. Really, oh, wow. it ma- it's matchy matchy. Um, so I'm kind of inclined towards this one. Honestly, I have one that's like more green. If I could grab, let me grab um, my, I was telling Cody before we did the stream, um, one of the things that I've been doing is after I finish a piece or when I need to do like a color comp, I will bring my sketch or my, um, my final piece into Lightroom and I will um, edit the colors in Lightroom just because sometimes I don't always choose like the perfect, most harmonious color palette mm-hmm. um, and Lightroom helps. So I also have um, this this green one um, that I thought was cool and glowy. I, I do really like the glowy stuff and it's like the garlic is like wicked garlic and then there's like glowy garlic cloves oh, around yeah, is kind of what I was going for. So. Um, I don't know if you, I would love to know which one you guys prefer, um, but let me know. Oh, 
Good question. Viola wants to know where she can find our designs so they can do. Oh, the, yeah. Totally yeah. forgot to mention that a few times uh, throughout the stream. Um, if you guys would like to participate in either this theme or any of our previous themes, you can head over to my Instagram. They're all posted there. Um, and so here is the original one that I did that Val is recreating. Um, and this is the one that I am recreating of Val's. And you can post your work um, with hashtag Adobe Live DTIYS. I'll most likely see it on Instagram. Or you can also post it in the Photoshop Discord under the Draw This In Your Style channel. Um, yeah, but you can see all of the past themes on my Instagram. Uh, you'll, you'll notice that every one of my um, Draw This In Your Styles for this uh, has the same um, uh, like text over it. Um, mm -hmm. And then if you go to the uh the post and then scroll to the second slide you'll see my guests version of that theme as well so you can create uh choose any one of those and um we are actually about to go look at uh community entries yes um, so yeah Let's so we it. have a few more new ones for the witch theme um and so yeah i'm gonna head on over there right now So I have, I did get, um, I know, I did get also notified by a few different artists for works in progress too. So okay. I won't be able to show them right now, um, but I will post them to my Instagram story once they're finished. Um, but we did get these uh, couple of finished ones. I love this one so much. Oh, I uh, love how Christmassy. I oh know. no. Nikki narrates. Thank you so much for participating. This is so, so cute. Um, I saw this like right after we finished the stream yesterday that they posted it. Um, and <laughs> it's just so cute. I love how it, the, the witch hat kind of almost just looks like a Santa hat now. Yeah. And, and it has the snow and like yeah. the ears are kind of coming through the snow. That is so cute. So cute. Yeah. Little, little, maybe sugar plums and candy canes and holly. it's hot cocoa in the cauldron oh, oh, yes. oh well i love done. it well done so i cute. like it good stuff <laughs> and then uh this one just came in shortly before the stream a few hours before the stream i love this person's work too i've never seen it before but if you go to their profile uh, the sketchy pumpkin all of their work is black and teal like this Oh, really? Super cool. Yeah. I was thinking that they may, because if you look at their, uh, for, uh, their profile picture here, here's mm -hmm. a, here, I'll just go to, I'll just go to their profile right now. Yeah. Let's, let's do it. Let's go check it out. Sketchy pumpkin. Look at Ooh, that pop of artwork. yellow is good. Yeah. That's, oh, these colors are so awesome. I love it. All spooky, oh, spooky cute. The, 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 um, the mermaid. Yes. That's so cool. Super cool. That's look at wild. This, yes. Look at that. Mm new new fave new yeah. fave artist that's cool yeah. stuff very that's cool stuff. check out sketchy pumpkin so yeah thank you so much sketchy pumpkin for participating we really love your work um yeah so let's go back we have a few more minutes we only had those two entries for today but i wanted to scroll back down the list a little bit here i think mm -hmm. there might have been a few that i haven't shown on the stream um and if Val hasn't seen any of the entries too. We can check out some of the old entries for Val as well. Yeah, I'd love to see some of the the earlier ones just because I haven't seen every um every theme that you've had yeah. so far. So I would love to take a look. Yeah. Um yeah, so this one was actually done by our moderator Wade Acuff. Oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this was uh the first theme we did with Stevie Ray drawn for um the fairy uh mm -hmm. the autumn fairy so amazing the, the texture on these pumpkins is just so incredible. good so so realistic it's so incredible Wade uh, yeah. Wade is like low-key a very high-key artist he's yeah. like Go follow Wade. <laughs> if he, he would probably never tell you how excellent he is that would probably never come out of his mouth um but you guys should know that Wade Acuff is fabulous and you should check out his work because he's yeah. awesome and then this artist, I found, I discovered this artist through uh, Adobe Live Draw This In Your Style as well. Uh, they have uh, had quite a few entries um, and their work is super adorable. This is another one of their entries. So I love their cute. Flat I love colors. that there's, yeah, the flat yeah. colors, but like the breaks in the lines, especially yeah. on that string. Oh, that's We can cute. check out some more of their work on their, their Instagram is so pretty. Oh no, look at the, <laughs> the trick or treat pumpkin. Oh, so no. cute. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the theming on their Instagram is really beautiful. I love their colors. Yeah. This is excellent. 
Oh, Paco in the chat. Hey, DJ Pac-Man in the house. <laughs> Val and Cody on the stream together. Yes, yes, indeed. The dynamic duo, as Sam yep. said yesterday. Yep. <laughs> This one, I really liked this. This was a version of mine. Um, the theme was bus stop. Uh, mm -hmm. So he here's my original one. Cute. <laughs> the, I, I, I love this. This was one of my favorite entries, I think, because it, it reminds me of like a Nickelodeon cartoon or yeah. something. Like it totally looks like it could be like a TV show or something. Yeah, I um, love it. I love yeah. like the vibe and like how they interpreted your your work too, because I think that you guys both have unique methods of like putting characters into a scene and you guys it like the two pieces are so different but it's the exact same thing mm -hmm. that is just so cool that's awesome all right you guys i don't want to get cut off or uh you know all, all that jam mm -hmm. <laughs> it happens to the best of us uh but uh, it is about that time. So thank you all so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. We had a lot of fun. And, um, you know, me and Val will post our work once we're finished online. And if you guys have any more entries, of course, feel free again to post them online with the hashtag Adobe Live DTIYS. And we can share them on our Instagram story and, and hang out and stuff. So um, we will see you next time. Uh, the next episode for Draw This In Your Style is not going to be until December 8th and 9th because we have Thanksgiving break and stuff like that. Um, but stick around for Adobe Live tomorrow. And uh, yeah, thank you all so much for hanging out with us and we will see you guys next time. Bye, Bye. everybody. Bye. Thank you.